Okay, in this video we're going to get to the point where we can do the following. I'll just uh, go ahead and show you here. If I run the program uh, and I type my name and uh, if I type look, it shows me what room I'm in with the descriptions and all that good stuff. Uh, I can now summon a single creature that I've created and we'll walk through all this. If I type summon troll and I type look, it shows me um, the room description. It also indicates a troll is standing here. Okay, um, I can look troll and it's going to show me what that troll stats are right now. That's it, just accuracy and HP. Um, so that's kind of what we're shooting for right now is just getting that set up. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a class here. So I'm going to right click on SR, SRC and then new class. And I'm going to call this troll. Okay, and you're going to want to create this. Now, this is going to extend the NPC class. And if you're not sure how extending a class works, that's something you should probably look at. Um, basically, if we extend NPC, this class will get all the properties of NPC. And then we can add to it or modify or do what we need to. Um, so this definitely has to extend uh, NPC. Now, the ID inside of the constructor method now, the ID has the exact same name as the class. Okay. I'm giving it HP 10. You'll notice I'm not declaring these things because all of these are inside of uh, NPC already and we're extending that class. I'm giving it an accuracy of 25, a description, a troll stands here drooling. That's what the description is, what we see when it's in the room. And I'm also giving it the name a troll. Okay. Um, so you want to create that class. All right. And what I'm going to do is a pause and get that done. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is we're going to start to organize a little bit. And inside of SRC, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose new. And uh, we're going to create a new source folder. All right, and I'm going to call this NPCs because I'm going to want to put every NPC we create in the game is going to be a class. So we might as well start dropping them somewhere where we know where to look for them. And now I can just take troll and I can slide it into NPCs. I'm going to take NPC and put it in there too. All right, so we've got a new source folder here that contains our NPCs and we'll be putting those in there. Eventually we'll also have a source folder for item uh, as well. Okay. So you want to pause the video and get that set up. Okay, the next step is to go to gameobjects.java and we're going to create a static array list and I'm going to call this NPC database. All right, and it's a new array list of type object. All right, um, I could give this uh, type NPC, but for now I'm just going to give it type object um, so that we can stick any object in there because the NPCs could be uh, extended from NPC, it could be a troll, it could be anything. So I'm going to go ahead and say type object here. And then I'm going to create a method that initializes this array. And so npc.database.add new npc, npc.database.add new troll. So every time I add a new creature, it's going to get to the point where when you add a new creature, you just have to add it to this initialize array. And this npc database will contain a list of all the creatures that are available in the game. And we'll be looping through them and checking to see where they belong and you know where they should be and, and what's happening with them. Um, so this NPC database is then going to be a master list. Right now I just have NPC and troll. So pause and get that set up. All right. Um, so once you get that happening, let's go to, to uh, Simple RPG. The very first thing I'm going to do in the program before I get to the game loop is I'm going to call GameObjects.initialize NPC array. So that NPC array, the very first thing now that happens in the game, well, before the game logic, after the game logic is created, is um, we're going to populate our NPC array, uh, and that's going to set up our NPC database. So you want to call that. All right. Now this is the room class, and what I've done inside of the room class is I've created a list called NPC. Okay, of um, I could have made that object. I'm going to call it NPC. It'll work. Um, list NPC, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be called NPC, and it's an array list. And any NPC that is in a room that has been constructed, all right, will show up here if we just loop through it. So if we're in room one and we're looking at room one, and we list through all the NPCs that are here, if we've added one, the NPC will show up. So every room now is going to get a list, an array list of NPCs.
Okay, let's add our summon command. And inside of process command, uh, when the user types look right now, we're catching it. Uh, if the user types summon as the first word, we're now going to call a method called summon and we're going to pass it the entire um, string array that the user typed. All right, so hopefully they type more than one thing. For example, in this case, summon troll, right? Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to maximize this now. Uh, so let's scroll down to the summon method here. Okay, now if length equals one, I'm going to print summon what exactly? Because if they just type summon, you know, well, what do you want to summon? So that catches that. Now, if the array is two, we're going to check what that second word is. Okay, and so here it is for int i equals zero, i is less than game objects dot npc database dot size. We're going to loop through the entire npc database, all the objects that have been added there. Okay. And we're going to create a local NPC object, and we're going to pull it off the database because the database itself, if I look at game objects, remember, is type object. So we have to do what's called a cast. All right, so I'm going to say, OK, grab, uh, for example, if int i equals 0, grab the zeroth element right, um, on the NPC database, the first one there, cast it to an NPC. We're going to call it local NPC. So that way we just get a little copy of it here. We can kind of check things out with. If local NPC.ID dot equals ignore case x1, all right, so if the ID of the local NPC equals what the user typed, all right, and in this case, the ID is the same as the class, and if the user types summon troll, that will match. Okay. We're now going to loop through all the rooms in the game, all right. And we're going to check to see um, int y equals 0, y is less than game objects room dot size y plus plus. We're going to get every room and we're going to see if it matches what room the PC is in. Okay, so we if the room is, so right now the PC is in room one and there's only one room, so it will match. Game objects dot room dot get zero is going to have a room number of one, because that's all we have. And the PC was dropped into room one at the beginning. So those two things will match. But essentially, we want to know uh, what room we're going to be adding an NPC to, to, because if the user types summon, they're going to be in a room. And we want to match that, right? Um, all right, so we're going to get the room that the NPC, the user is in. And we're going to add an NPC to that. All right, and the NPC that gets added uses this, OK? Class.forename local NPC.id. All right, and what that does is, all right, local npc.id is a string. All right? And this method call here will take a string and it will check to see if there's a class that's available that matches that string and it will create a new instance of it. So if the uh, user typed troll, local npc.id equals troll, we do have a class called troll. All right? And it's going to um, add an npc to that room that is the troll we've created. Okay? And that's going to print you summon a game objects room dot get dot y dot npc. All right. Um, uh, dot, this is also a part of it. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so if I, let me see if I can get it here. Nope. All right. npc dot get. All right, dot game objects room dot get dot y dot npc dot size minus one. Okay, so here it is. You summon a. We're gonna get the room we're in. All right, we're gonna take a look at the NPC list, and we're now gonna get from that NPC list the last NPC that was added. Now this is kind of important because we're gonna see this a lot. Okay, game objects dot room dot get y, which is the room the user's in right now dot npc dot size minus one is the last npc that was added and we just added an npc so if we add an npc to the npc list inside of the room it has a size of one okay but it's at position zero so in order to print the name of what you just summoned you want to print what's at position zero so you get the size minus one to get the last one on the stack. And this little chunk here, gameobjects.room.get.y.npc.size minus one to get the last NPC on the stack inside of room is a pretty common logic just to grab the, la the last one that was made. 
and it'll say you summon a name and in this case the last one that was made was a was a troll now if you type in this here it'll underline in red and it'll say you need to you know have a try catch statement you can right click and it will automatically surround it with this try catch okay and once you do that if you type uh, summon troll if you've got anything in place it should work all right so let's take a look at how our look method works so there's that all right, so let's go up to where look is. And we're basically doing the same thing. If length equals one, uh, we come down here and we've got all this stuff where we're printing exits and we're printing descriptions, right? Well, we just add a for loop to the end of this if length equals one. Y equals zero, Y is less than uh, game objects room dot get dot I dot NPC dot size. Okay, so we've, uh, if we're looking, we're determining whether or not the PC, what room are we going to look at? You know, we want to look at the room number, we want to see what the PC is in, and only grab that one, okay? And now we're going to loop through the NPC list in that room, all right? And we're just going to print gameobjectsroom.get.i, which is the room we're in, npc.get.y, any NPCs that are in that list, we're going to print the description. In this case, it prints a troll is standing here. So we're looping through all the NPCs in the room we're, we're, we're standing in, and we're printing the description for them. All right. Now, we also have, if length equals 2, you want to be able to look at the NPC and see its stats, right? And so once again, we, we loop through the rooms. We see what room we're standing in. All right. And then we're going to loop through all the NPCs in that room the same way. And if x1 equals ignore case, game objects.room.get.y.npc.get.i.id. In other words, if the user type troll, all right, and there is an NPC in the room that has an ID of troll, all right, it will print, it will call NPC, it will call the look method inside of that NPC. And the look method inside of the NPCs is very much the same as the look method inside of a PC. So let's take a look at the look method that I have inside of NPC. All right, so every NPC also has a look method. And it simply prints the name of the PC, the accuracy, and the HP. Okay, now if you get all this set up, here's the upshot. Okay, I can take troll now. All right. And um, let's go ahead and create a new class. All right, so now once all this is set up, we can add monsters to the game freely. All right, so watch this. If I click new and then class, and let's say I create, I'm gonna call this a dragon. All right, and I finish. All right, well now I've got dragon, and this is going to extend NPC. All right. And let's grab my troll and just grab this stuff here so I know what to fill in. Copy, dragon. This is how quickly you can add monsters to your game if you have this set up. This is going to be public dragon. The ID is going to match the class name. All right, I'm going to give it an HP of 100, accuracy of 50, and I'm going to say that I'm going to say a dragon stands here. Just modifying these a little bit. And then I'm going to say a dragon for the name. Now I've got it set up. I have to do one more thing. And that's inside of game objects now that I've got my dragon class set up. And it's complaining at me right now, so let's see why. I'm missing my constructor closing bracket. So now when I go to my game objects, I just have to add it to the NPC database. All right, boom. Now watch this. New dragon. Now if I run the game with the new dragon added, I've added a class and I've added it to the database. All that code serves to do this. All right, I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna type summon dragon. You summon a dragon. I'm gonna type look, a dragon stands here. Look at dragon. And now I've got a dragon in the game. Okay, so if you can follow this tutorial, essentially you can just add classes and they're just going to appear in the game through the summon and look and everything works together. Once again, as we move forward, it's designed so this game is easily expandable without having to add a lot of extra code. If you've got good code in place, it sort of deals with what you want. Um, okay, so good luck. And if you're in my class, uh, let me know if you need any help. If you're at home and you're raising your hand right now, I'm sorry, you're on your own.